Hey, this is Denver Wade Trent, and you are listening to Rock Paper Podcast with Chris and Shane. Welcome to Rock Paper Podcast. My name is Chris Buter. I'm Shane Presley. We are now officially on iTunes. Exciting stuff. Um, so we'll be famous here very shortly. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter, Rock Paper Podcast, without the T, and on Facebook. Um, but instead of SoundCloud, now you can get these on iTunes. So that's pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, our guest this week, musician Wade Trent, who not only is awesome at guitar, but also uh, coincidentally wore a video game t-shirt like myself. He's got a Call of Duty War World at War <laughs> shirt on. I got a Legend of Zelda. Uh, so already it's off to a good start. Wade, welcome to the show. Yeah, right. Thanks for having me. Uh, so so you got this beautiful looking guitar here. Uh, how long have you been playing? I started playing when I was six. I was waiting for that. I could have started last week. Right, and, yeah, is, I just uh, picked it up, uh, got on YouTube, and uh, yeah, so it's pretty awesome. I learned the G chord, man. Yeah. You're going to love it. Yeah, just play a couple things. So six, you said you went six? Six, 24 oh, years. Holy cow. 24 years. I started when I was uh, 17, and I still suck. Go ahead. Yeah, not very good. One of those things where I started playing, and I taught my brother how to play, and he, like, in two weeks, was way better than I was. Yeah. It was stupid. Hate well, it's talk. one of those things that... <laughs> If I if I tried to learn now or <laughs> later on, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah. My patience sucks. Yeah. So I did it before I even knew what patience was. What, oh, there you, you go. Know I mean, got all the good stuff like the basics out of the way. Mm-hmm. You're on to go. Uh, so so you do a mixture of covers and originals. Is that correct? I do. I do. I uh, been writing. There's actually a couple of musicians that are really talented. I've been writing with um, on Wednesdays and Sundays. So before long, I'll have enough to get out and nice. start pushing it. That's cool. So, I, I've always been curious, and maybe this is a dumb question, probably is, but like, is it more intimidating, <laughs> probably, to go out and do like a original material, or you think covers? Like, because you think like doing the covers, there's more expectation. Like, this has been done, where, or is it like more difficult to go? I've never there? thought of it like that. Oh, sorry. I never, no, I never. <laughs> and had, now he's, he's, he stopped playing guitar after just, that day because. Can we cuss? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, we're totally cool. Thanks for fucking that up. Totally. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. <laughs> now my son can't listen to this. Yeah. Thanks a right. lot. Jeez. We're going to get fined by the FCC. Yeah. No, I told no. I told iTunes we were explicit. <laughs> that was totally cool. Um, <laughs> I, I've never thought. Either or, they suck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous on either one of them. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I just, I just, I just, it was, when I, when I was driving here, I was thinking, you know, kind of stuff to ask you, and that's something that just crossed my mind. I'm like, I wonder if it's harder to play covers where there's that expectation of the song's been done, it, or... Theory, you would probably would be. Or, you know, your own stuff, and you're like, this is something totally original, thrown around. I, th- I think, I think it's, it would, it would equal out, because covers, you have that going, man, what are people going to think, because that's already done, do I sound mm-hmm. good enough, or whatever... <laughs> Um, or if you're doing your originals, then you're nervous if you anybody's gonna like it at all. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think. I mean, as a fan, I think it might be easier to pass off covers though. Being like, if, as long as you're close enough, I think people, especially in a bar vibe, when people have been drinking, they can easily yeah. uh, start singing along with you and stuff. And um, unless you just completely butcher it, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. Uh, right. We're gonna play the song that I think you didn't even play those the words were not even right, right. at all. You just were Same tonight. I was way off. Off. <laughs> way off. You guys didn't recognize Baby Got Back? <laughs> What's right. wrong with you? So, um you've been playing since you're little G so is this like a like more of something you're kinda of pushing for a career or is it something just a hobby? Is it really Absolutely. pursuing for a, mm-hmm. that's awesome. So um what kind of genre or do you just play kind of anything? Do you just are you are you a fan of all sorts of music? Or I am a fan. I'm. I'm all, I, I think. I believe. I truly believe. If it's good music, it doesn't matter what genre it is. So, right. Um, I was raised on country, um, but man, I've I've been in uh, raised on old gospel. Actually, I was doing when I was twelve. I uh, went with a guy from church and would help him set up at an old gospel. So I, I was raised on gospel. Um, and country, and then when I started playing, all we had was an acoustic, so I learned on that. And then when I was nine, I got my first electric, and then I got into metal. You know, yeah. and then I got into death metal. Of course, right. I mean that's yeah. only natural progression. <laughs> right. <laughs> Once you hit metal, you got to go. It's not heavy enough. Right. It's not heavy enough. <laughs> and then I got out of high school and was into the blues. That's 
my main thing. And then when I started doing the acoustic thing, then alternative, because that's always been, it's weird, man. Like, when I'm playing, I'm not good with lyrics, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like the radio in my head, and I play along with it. Oh, right. So uh, I'll make up words if I don't know them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and then if you're like, sometimes you're playing a bar, people are drunk, they're not going to know anyway. They're just like, hey, yeah, they man, don't know. it's a freaking song, man. Yeah, I throw, so I throw some... Some perverted t- tags in there. Uh, yeah, those are my favorite when because like people don't see it coming, but like I just laugh so hard when some of those lines you drop in there and the ones who get it smile, the ones who don't, I yeah. laugh at them because I'm like, I just made yeah. fun of you, man. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't, they didn't even notice yeah. it. Jeez. She's a whore and she doesn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> he, he seemed real. It was beautiful yeah, singing, but he was kind of a dick now that I'm right. thinking about. He was singing about me. It was really rude, man. Jeez. So, so are there any like um. Artists, or you know, who, who's really kind of oh, you said all over the place. Anybody who's like you're because I know like some bands that I'm just into, like you have those things where you're just obsessed with them. There's any, are there any artists that you're just like huge fans of that you, yeah, there's a many of them, but uh, guitar wise, there's Jeff Healy, mm-hmm. um, of course, Stevie Ray was one I grew up on, but Jeff Healy was the one I that's guy who I was obsessed with. Um, vocally, Aaron Lewis is one of them, yeah, there's all, there's all <laughs> well, I guess, I mean, yeah, like I said, if you have all different influences, it's going to be, all kinds you know, of all sorts of people are going to pick different right. pieces so, different things. Right, so, like, Sunday, I was at, actually, the first time I played the electric guitar in a long time, a couple mm-hmm. years, actually. It was a big jam I got invited to, and we were over there, and uh, they were like, hey, do some leads, so I got to do, and, and it's been so long, and I'm in such a different spot now. I was doing leads, and it was like, <laughs> Brad... Paisley slash Healy slash Slayer slash Dimebag. <laughs> I'm like, where the fuck am I going? What's man? happening? <laughs> right. But it was awesome. Just man. following the guitar, man. Right. Just go wherever. Yep. That's awesome. I'm I sure. was uh, I was reading in the Rolling Stone this week. Um, they were it was all about country. Um, and they were saying how all these different artists now are like gone country, like the from rock to country and they were talking about like Darius Rucker from Hootie and the Blowfish is now a big country star and how Sheryl Crow was a rock and like I feel like they've been doing the same music just now country music is kind of accepted them into their thing you know so it's like they made a mainstream country artist now but like those songs that Hootie and the Blowfish and, and Sheryl Crow were putting out were you know pretty much country right. anyway yeah. were, I, th- I think the name needs to change honestly I th- when you say country to me yeah. I'm thinking Garth oh yeah I'm yeah. thinking Alan Jackson right you know what yeah. I'm saying now it's not country it's, to me it's, all, yeah, it's, it's not music well see and, and that's what yeah. I've heard what was, I was watching something they were talking about Garth Brooks like when he kind of got, got going because he really was one kind of what country pop country in a sense like on the map and I think that's people will kind of debate that that's when country started to move towards a more pop <laughs> right. and not not because Garth Brooks like that's he's the one country guy that I really like listen to and I know all you know most of his stuff. Right, um but yeah like Alan Jackson that's why I was curious to see what your thoughts on were like the the that genre nine, now that because it's country so, man is so good. George Strait and them. Yeah. You know that I mean even I mean growing up on it some of it I was like oh, okay but it was so Alabama, you know, yeah. all of them. <laughs> Roll on. Diamond Rio. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's like shit. Man. Yeah, music to now. Me. Uh, country music now just seems like it's very I mean I think it's just music in general it's it's very produced and there doesn't seem it, it seems like somebody put a put a YouTube video of like all these country songs and they have to have like these mm-hmm. you know certain topics in them and there's like they play like the top five country songs from like last year and they're all like the same pattern it's like it, it just is, all man. seems like a formula and it's yeah. not right what it used to be. And they, and, they, and they try to justify it as this is everyday life of... Right. It's like, come on, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, I guess it's good because you're getting exposure to different genres and you start seeing crossovers, but at the same time, you know, people are like, country music now, and you listen to you're like, that doesn't sound like country music right. at all. I mean, it just seems way too... Um, it's commercialized, man. Yeah, I don't know. And I guess there's people are gonna could say the same thing with like you said '90s or any right. thing. But yep. I, I'm in the same boat as you are that but I. It's, but it's big. I mean, yeah, it's really taken off now. Then and like I said, I think Garth Brooks and even like I said Alan Jackson was the two kind of really got it going. And then now it's just it seemed it, okay. This is what it seemed like, and I, I've never been able to put it into words. And I've tried. I've had many mm-hmm. comments, but it seems like if you took, if you took Garth. And he was nothing 
as big as he was, his music would have been the same. Mm-hmm. In his living room, he wrote it, or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't buy that now. Yeah, in I think today's country, I don't buy that. Maybe the thing that Garth Brooks kind of helped move forward that's so big now is like the big arena country stars because Garth Brooks put on a show. It wasn't yeah, just right. like you know he's the one who really you know the country country guys during that time. It was unheard of to be just like this big not theatrical but like. Right. Garth Brooks was like on why I mean he was just put on a freaking right. phenomenal his, show and his biggest fan Garth's biggest fan or Garth was a biggest fan too Chris Ledoux which yeah wasn't near as popular as as Garth but it was real right you know what I mean and yeah. that what sold I mean if Garth Brooks is gonna be obsessed with you, you know, right yeah not, you know what I mean you, get, yeah you buy that it's real. Yeah, Garth Brooks, man. I could just listen to his stuff all the time. Though. I don't think he's on Spotify. That kind of bums me out. So I listen to Spotify and like, yeah. I could listen to some Garth Brooks right now. And it's, and it's the and it's the songs that didn't make that radio that were. That's yeah. when you know when it, when the song the songs don't hit the radio and yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Well, you, know you could mean? listen to it. like he had a couple of those like double disc just greatest greatest hits, right. but you're like every single song on here is just phenomenal and right. I don't know like Alabama when yeah. they have more number one songs than people do. Songs, period. Right. You know, it's like, that's awesome. Yeah. Man. Well, and some, me, we, me and you talked about in like the first episode is like the attention span of people now is just so, it's got to be hard to be an artist. And we've actually talked about it a couple times. So, like, people's attention span, it's so, I want this now. And then within a year, they've moved on to somebody bigger and better. And that's because also commercialized of like yeah. the All industry right. of just like people are, they're losing so much money in like the big, high end major labels that yeah, there's not a whole lot of money to make. And that's why you see a lot more, like, I guess, independent artists being able you to take see, them. You see a lot of these guys live, and it's like, oh, Yeah, right. Really? You yeah. know what I mean? Auto-tune's awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you right. like, oh. Yeah, it makes me sick. Uh, yeah, it, I don't know. That's And it comes back to your thing where, like, there's no, I mean, there's always going to be people who are like, this is, I, you know, have a passion for that type of music, and you can't fault them for it, because it's just like me saying I enjoy Third Eye Blind, and somebody be like, Third Eye Blind sucks. Right. It's just, it's all personal opinion, just like there's, me and my buddy have had that conversation where there's no such thing as bad music, yeah. because somebody's always going right. to find a passion for it. And like, and, like, and like when I said, man, it, it doesn't matter what genre, if it's, if it's good, it works. Right. right. And, and, and Aaron Lewis is great at that, because it's like, when he's when he whatever converted whatever the hell you want to call it yeah he's the same in there as he is in Stain it doesn't matter he's even yeah. doing like the some of the music's the old style mm. Merle and it and it works man yeah you know what I mean so it's like it doesn't matter right and that's I guess I mean you almost have to I mean if you would have thought of if he would have tried to put out something like that with Stain there's no chance because uh, that 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 fan base, some of them are so kind of straightforward, like we want to hear this, that you have to actually break away and probably do your own thing to have the opportunity right. to do that. because, And then people can see, oh, wow. This and is... they gave it a chance. Right. It's like, yeah. it's the same dude, man. Yeah. You know it's what just, I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's funny where it's if you... It's the beautiful thing about it. At least that's the way I see it. Yeah. It's funny how when people put labels on certain things, how they just kind of tunnel vision into that, that mm-hmm. genre. And it's like, if you wouldn't have just said this is metal or rock and just said, listen to this and see what you think and said, this is... Aaron Lewis from Stained. You could have said, this is Stained, and they'd be like, oh, that's awesome. But the fact that, like, this is just Aaron Lewis. People, I think, sometimes are too, I don't know what the word is, like, particular about it being this band or this guy, and they want him to be in this genre. When really, it's just like, if it's good music, man, just enjoy it. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's, exactly. If you get a kick out of it, that, that's all that matters. So. That's kind of what I was getting into, like, how this is all good, because I saw Aaron speaking to him live, and, and he did... Um, like a couple covers, a couple of Stain songs, and a couple of off his uh, new country albums, and they all sound like they could be on the same album. I mean, it's not like you know, right. it's not like okay, here's my rock song, here's my country song. Here, let me change my <laughs> they, voice. Yeah, right. they're all yeah. It's all his stuff. You should put it on a parenthesis, yeah. like release it on yeah. an album, put that's it on the parenthesis. Biggest, country. That, <laughs> right. no. That's yeah. the biggest compliment that I I get. That's changed from recently to when I first started. Is now they're going. That didn't sound like the cover. Yeah. yeah. It sounded like you because I because now I can take them and, and put your own spin I, on I, it. And I found my I found my range and my where I'm comfortable, and then I yeah. make it 
and then I feel that, and then it's it's a whole different. It doesn't sound like a cover. It's almost like your own. Like, that's how like there's some songs that you listen to, especially like how big YouTube is with people who are able to upload their own kind of covers and stuff. Right. And you're like, that sounds better than you know, some of these others. Like I know, right. uh, who is it? Voice Avenue's gotten big from co- doing yeah. covers, and some of their stuff sounds like there's a Lincoln Park song they did. It just sounds awesome. I'm like, this almost sounds better than Lincoln Park, just right. because they put a different spin on it, and mm-hmm. may not be necessarily their lyrics, but man, you turn a song into it, whether it's soft or mm-hmm. however, and I'm like, that's really pretty. I could listen to this all day, you know. Right. Or even some of the pop songs where they just make it all poppy and then Boyce Avenue comes and they make it really kind of more mellow and like almost have heart to it and you're like God this is a really pretty song when it's not auto-tuned to hell and you know right. whatever you know yep I don't know beauty but, of music man. yeah right Yeah. when it's pure it's good no matter what yeah, yeah. I need to make pure music yeah, get instead on of it, our man. techno I know all our techno songs well they make it so like. easy now that yeah these half talented people sound like a million bucks oh, and it's not right. the case man yeah I think like uh, there's that guy, the guy uh, Joey Moy. Like I don't know, he's been seeking a lot of or been receiving a lot of praise uh, because he's produced like that Florida Georgia Line album, mm-hmm. which like blew up with all those those guys are big in country now. But but he also like produced uh, like Nickelback's album. So like there's a lot of people calling Florida Georgia Line now the new like link. Uh, Nickelback uh-huh. of country, and and because they really are like if you break down like the production and stuff like he took the same format of Nickelback and p- applied it to the FGL record and like so, but he's got like a kind of a structure a format that works and he keeps kind of spinning these songs and they're all you know they're different songs there's similar similarities Flow in there it, yeah. yeah so like and people are like you know that's hot right now so people are like you just keep putting these out and like they're all they're all pretty much the same song I think it's right. it's funny how um, pop artists get all this recognition when really like you look at how many people actually wrote these songs like oh, yeah. I'd love to know a song that some of these pop artists have actually written and that's what that always always drove me nuts is that like I feel like if you're going to be a big you know star or whatever I mean sure anybody can teach somebody to go and Chore, you know, do choreography or whatever, but like some of the songs that get really big are written by these individuals, who, and good for them. Like if they can write a song, it's awesome. But like it just drives me nuts when it's like, okay, you're basically a musician. You're basically being told to just sing this that was written mm-hmm. by somebody else. You just go sing, and then you get all the credit for it. And that's like, that always drove me drove me nuts. That it's like when they don't do their own stuff, when they don't, you know, they get big off of, um, you know, stuff that somebody else wrote for them. And mm-hmm. that's I'm sure how the industry is. But I just always found more respect, especially for like it seems like more rock bands get you know, are more uh, sincere with writing their own music. You know, because they have to write... Or the ones that do, that don't make it big. Yeah. You know, but they stick to their guns and do their own stuff. Right. You it's know. one thing, and then compared to, like, you know, Lady Gaga, whoever, and it's like, okay, it's basically walking up and saying, all right, here's the song, go out there and or go sing it, and then Lady right. Gaga's huge for it. It's like, I mean, I'm sure these songwriters get phenomenal amounts of money for it, but I'm just yeah. like, that always drove me nuts about pop musicians and just people who don't do their own music because you look at those I think mostly rock rock artists and I, I, mean, I don't know if it's like how I don't know how like the genres is like hip hop if they are really into like doing their own lyrics and stuff I like think that. there's uh, they're like I think in hip hop they're called more like they call them more ghost writers where people yeah. people submit like lyrics and rhymes and like for you know Jay Z or whatever like the big artist yeah and but like so Jay Z like gets the credit but uh, so I don't think is as credited as much, uh, right? Like in pop and country. It's just like they're seen as geniuses, and I'm like, but you yeah. didn't really write the song. Right. You just, I mean, sure, you got charisma. You can't just say go out there and uh, put anybody out there. But I'm just like, I think there's more respect when a band can actually fully sure. have, I mean, full control over everything they're creating and writing, and um, and I think well, I saw something on YouTube too that uh, it was like Dave Grohl came out and he's like nobody's got any, nobody in this band's going to be playing the computer or whatever. It's all instruments and, you know, fuck that, sh- whatever, you know, just because they're like, this is just genuine rock music. And I don't know, I got a lot of respect for that stuff then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, it's just like, you know, I can't say, well, you suck, because then it's just like, you know what, they're doing their own thing, whatever. I, you know, I can't, I'm not I'm not a big musician or whatever, but it just, I don't know, I always have more respect for rock bands than yeah. a pop artist or something. So that's just me. That's just me. I don't know. But I still couldn't, imagine trying to be like you know on your end where you're trying to do it for a living and just thinking like how small people's attention spans are like you probably got to work three or four times harder than what it used to be because people have all these sources of music and stuff it's like 
it's just got to be crazy. But even more respect to you for being like, you know what? Screw it. I'm, I love doing this. I'm going to go out right. and do it, you know? Well, and not to mention, most nights you're probably competing with a Cardinal baseball game or a <laughs> right. Blues hockey game or whatever. Yep. You know, you're trying to keep their attention over the sports on the TV and everything else that's going on. It's good fun. Uh, so we were talking a little bit before we started about your tattoos. How how many tattoos do you got? Do you know? Or how do you keep count? Because I got I got three, and they look nothing like what you got. Because like you got the sleeve going on, it's awesome. There's seven big ones. So I mean, this yeah, these are off his his arm, but they're awesome. Like yeah, the color, tons of color. It's David the Ink Spot and Troy. When did you get your first one? How long ago do you know? Um, were you six? <laughs> Hello, <laughs> picked, up, picked up picked up the guitar and got the first tattoo, oh, and you're set. Probably man. ten years ago. I got it on my out of the. It was before he got his shop. <clears throat> Oh, okay. It was in his living room. <clears throat> oh, hey, there you cheap, <laughs> nasty looking chief symbol that he's got to redo. Oh, Dave. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Come on, bud. Aren't they all the first? That's just like the getting it done and then the addiction starts. You know? right. Just getting that first crappy like, one and then it's like, no, he's And then he did this one. Yeah, he's, he's got like, this. Look at the. I know I can't see it in here, but he just put those colors together. I mean, just it's night and day compared to what he when he first started. To what he is now, you know. Yeah, he's got this gnarly Mighty Mouse, just, just awesome. <laughs> he's like, like, he's like, we're gonna cover that up because that's like showing somebody my high school picture. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. He's like, yeah, I don't want to tell anybody who, who did that. Jeez, mm-hmm. do you have any tattoo chain? No. Nope. You ever had any interest in getting them? It's, it's crossed my mind, but yeah, I haven't really found anything that's just curious. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, you know gonna be permanent yet. I got so. the like the cardinal one, like this little dinky one when I was like first year of college, I think, and then. Uh, I have this one and my blues one. I'm like, I've always wanted to get more, but then it's like a money thing. I'm too poor. Well, you know, I just don't have right. enough money to get them. But then it's like, yeah, the same thing where you start to think more about it. And you're like, what do I want to get that, like, you know, just a little more meaning? And now having a son and a daughter on the way, I want to get something like that. But I still just like, I, I want to go, like, make me a cool tattoo. And they're like, oh, what do you want? I'm like, I don't know. Just make it cool. And, you know. Well, all and, these, all these, it's a fine line. A lot of people come in, let the tattoo artists, is what they're artists, man. Yeah. I went and I was like, hey, I want a diamond. And that's all I said. I said, I wanted an eye. That's all I said. See, that's, that's probably what I'd be doing. That's like, all him doing. I said, idea. I want Mighty Mouse. That's what he did. Do you got a favorite one? No, man. They all, no. They're all recovery. I think they, that Mighty Mouse one's just gnarly. Because like, it just looks so, the color's just awesome. It's really hard, man. I think that Mighty Mouse one's stupid. I would <laughs> never get a Mighty Mouse. <laughs> no, I like the double A battery. I used to work at Energizer. Uh, connected so. to it. It's connected to, uh, oh. for AA. Connected to Mighty Oh, I got you. Okay, I got you. I want to get a clock here. Yeah. With uh, my sobriety date set as the time. Oh. I'm going to get a probably an arrowhead here, and then we'll finish that up. Awesome. Do you have any on your other arm? Nope. This one's going to no. be the demented, the, nasty. Right. All the skulls and. There you go. <laughs> like the uh, who was it? Randy Orton. The wrestlers got just all these like black like smoke skull stuffs going on. Yeah. It's cool. I thought about. Um, not to bring it all down, but when, <laughs> when my dog <laughs> passed, when I, my dog passed Josh, a while back, yeah. I uh, I thought about getting like a dog tag or something with, oh, yeah. with his name and and uh, something like that to remember him. Get right through your neck. Yeah, that'd right. Be nice. that'd be sweet. Yeah. Get a mug shot and just be like, well, that's <laughs> pretty. The dog tag right there on your forehead. Yeah. What kind of dog was it? Oh, what was, was it? Pit. Yeah. Pit. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Those are horrible dogs. Yeah. No, I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know those dogs are absolutely horrible? Why would you get one of those? Jeez. Dude. Facebook posts. These horrible dogs. No, I'm just joking. Good times. I, I want yeah, I want to get more tattoos, but I don't know. I just don't have I don't know. I just I, I guess I'm not brave enough to go and be like, I want this because I'm so my attention span's so horrible, like I, I think I want something and I, I do it and I'm like, mm, you know, it wasn't so much of a you know big fan of it you know, I, just, I just wish I wasn't so stupid sometimes I don't dislike any of my tattoos I just wish I was more consistent on what I want I was just laughing because Wade just ate some jelly beans that are still sitting here from Easter so, uh, <laughs> were they chocolate <laughs> we had somebody bring in a bunch no, they're, of they're good oh they're starburst I think. My, my throat's kind of sore so I don't, I just, I don't take anything I can somebody brought in a bunch of jelly bellies to work and it was funny because it was in a bowl all these colors and by the end of the week weekend they're nothing but black ones chocolate oh, and black licorice, black licorice. single oh. two most disgusting flavors of anything in the history of the world yeah. I'm okay with it I don't, I don't need any Jeez. so what type of stuff do you do outside of music uh, 
play Call of Duty? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm a gamer. Or are you just a poser, man? Do you really play Call of Duty? Want, no. Hey, you want to hear this? I'll make it short, but I had a stalking issue with yeah. this lady who I've never even met. <laughs> and it was it was all nice and fun, you know, a little chat here, a little chat there. She sent me an Xbox One. What? Yeah. Wow. And then I found out she's fucking... Nuts. Bat shit crazy <laughs> and wasn't who she said she was and had like 800 different profiles. Was his name like Gary or something? He's like, I just need something to play Xbox One with, man. I just want a friend. Right. right, but after this happened, everybody's like, well, give him my number, man. I'll talk to her for a minute. She's going to send this kind of stuff. Exactly, yeah. I'll, I'll get you my number after this yeah. is done. So, I get an Xbox One. so yeah, dude, I've always been a Call of Duty freak. Yeah. I play it. I'm starting to like lose interest in Call of Duty, probably because I suck at it. Like, that's main core. But like, I, I like the Call of Duty World War Two, like the old ones, like the original ones. But now yeah. it's like getting too futuristic for me, and I'm like, I just want to go not suck and just a have gun, more. aim and shoot. Right. I don't want to. I don't know. Curve I, and I like the um, what was I playing the other day? Rainbow Six Vegas. Like just start throwing uh, that yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I like the more strategic games than like uh, the fast pace. Like even Battlefront, I was having. It gets curve. faster and faster. Yeah, and faster exactly. And faster. When I saw D3, they were doing that new Rainbow Six game, and it was a little more. Uh, like strategic based, I was like, that's kind of cool because it's just a little more cool. slow than yeah. just running and shooting people. Yeah. But again, it's probably because I'm horrible at them. <laughs> Modern Warfare Two is probably my favorite one. Was oh, it? I don't know if I played Modern Warfare. It's fun. I'm more of like I play sports games. Than I think that was right wrestling. after World War Two. Might have been. Yeah, I think so. I think they jumped to that after. Because Call of Duty Four and Modern Warfare Two are World at War and then Modern Warfare Two came out. Yeah, I still have uh, Call of Duty. Where you could sit and actually snipe some stuff. Yeah, like it was more, I don't know. Hide yeah, a little there's bit. Like, they had some really good sniper levels and stuff, and now I'm just Because like, I really did, man. I would get my camera on, and I'm like, I'm playing war, man. I'm yeah. going to hide. And then you'd get like messages like, stop camping, right, man. Right, you little pussy. What are you doing? Right. Like, Dude, I'm just playing the game. I'm killing you. Don't be mad. I, uh, Dork. Go to bed. You got school tomorrow. <laughs> Dude, I saw, I saw uh, like a, a pie chart or something, and it says um, the percentage of people who have Fuck my mom, and one percent said my dad, and then ninety nine percent was Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was hilarious. I'm like, that is yeah, funny. I love it. It was a good time. I get on, dude. Yeah, yeah. We do the whole Sunday nights, man. My brothers and buddies will have a time. We'll get on, and that's when yeah. we catch up and bullshit and play. I think that's just I don't have enough friends to like play. Uh, be most a, of them play hockey. I think this. that's kind of what it is. Uh, <laughs> I don't have an Xbox okay. One. I gotta talk to. I got a three sixty two. Oh, okay, there you go. I don't have Call of Duty. I just have a. Uh, all I have is I have Call of Duty the the World War Two one. That's all I have. Like I Call World Two. War II. Do you? Well, I don't remember which one it was. Call of Duty Three maybe or Two. I don't remember what the hell they're called. I just remember something somewhere. It. Somewhere. Love it, Dad. And I used to be into football. I mean, I'm a football freak, but yeah, I played football. But then that's like Tetris. There's yeah. certain plays you can't stop. There's you know. Yeah. I remember when I first started playing video games, man. I'm like that. Online, what? you know, it's <laughs> so never stupid. gonna go anywhere. Jeez. I'm gonna play campaign. Yeah. Oh. And now it's like, man, give me a robot, and I'm like, oh. See, that's I'm, I'm, I'm the other way around. Never play campaign. I'll play hockey online against other people, and probably because I can win. Like I'm like, I feel like I'm good, but like Madden and stuff like that. I'm like, these guys, there's people who just play it every day for. They do like me some hockey. That's fun. That's See, a great game. That's there, always been a great game. There you go. See, even in be Nintendo 64, it was even good. Oh yeah. That's a good time. So I'm just. I just. I just miss like uh, you know Goldeneye. Oh yeah, like, Mario Kart and Goldeneye sim- was just the simplicity. Fun. James Bond. I mean, they were, obviously they were advanced for their time, but the simplicity of those games compared to now, like it's just yeah, they're still fun. I mean, they still talk about how that game is still like considered one of the greatest. I'm surprised they didn't like. They brought it onto the. Brought onto like the Wii and like updated it, but like I don't know if we really played it. But there's something you can't play Wii like yeah. playing a first person shooter with the the weird controls yeah. I couldn't at least but yeah I would love to go back and just play like just Mario Party Mario Kart mm. all those old N64 games are just a blast like multiplayer <laughs> the dog just ate, they just eat a jelly bean yeah. yeah so everybody's getting some <laughs> Saturday night should, you should have seen me Saturday night I played at this cupcake and martini place in Cottleville mm. and it's a nice place right <laughs> and on each table they've got just like that they got a nice glass bowl with those, uh, it, they look like rocks, and, and with a candle on each one. Oh. Anyway, sitting around, and had some people come up, and I sat down. And I'm like, man, those look like those red, uh, what were those little red fire candies? What were they called? 
Like hot tamales? Red hot or something. Something, yeah. Those little hard candies that were, that were like cinnamon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, man, those look like them. And I finally, I would show them, I grabbed one, I, I put it in my mouth, and I was waiting for it to be a rock, and it was those. <laughs> and they're, they're addicted, and I love them. So I'm going, they're, they're, I'm going through it, I'm putting handfuls in my mouth. From seconds break on, I'm yeah. just like, I can't wait for break. <laughs> and I'm eating them, and <laughs> one of the waitresses comes over, and she's like, that's gross. She's like, that's all full of wax and stuff. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. Leave me alone, man. It's edible. As <laughs> so like, soon as you laugh at me, I'll pick it's edible. Get my case, man. I don't even care. I don't even care. I ain't doggy biscuits and baseball. So I, you know what I mean? I used, I used to eat the dog, uh, the milk bones when I was little. Yep. I don't know why, but... Uh, they're high in protein. They're good. You know? <laughs> that's why I'm so freaking jacked right Dip now. Dip them in man, peanut butter is good. Yeah. <laughs> you got your own, like, one of those conch balls. You know, you spill peanut butter and you're just going around. What do you got there, man? Uh, it's my dog's conch. I'm good. <laughs> just put filled with peanut butter. It's really good. Nice. What kind of snacks you like? Um... <laughs> like peanut butter and dog biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> really? Together? Yeah. What? You got a problem with that, man? <laughs> Delicious. Don't judge. Yeah. Get off my case, bro. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Goodness. Uh, so you say um, you play some Madden. Uh, Shane was going to give you some trouble about the Chiefs being a football fan. Now, are you a, are you a Rams fan, Shane? No, actually, I'm a Bears fan. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Well, see, I'm a Carolina fan because I was in, grew up in Charlotte. But I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm like a casual football fan. Sure. So somebody could be like, Cam Newton sucks. I'm like, oh, well, I don't care. <laughs> Whatever, you know. But yeah. you talk about the Blues, and it's, that's mm. another thing. But, like, you know, I'd, the Chiefs, what was the deal with the Chiefs? Because weren't they, like, phenomenal, and then they kind of cho- I don't know. Did they choke this year? They are like, up. Um, casual football fan here. <laughs> Were they playing that football game? <laughs> they had they had a great year, and then they went, and then they hit, blew a big lead in the playoff game. Yeah, that happens. You know. It's still sore. <laughs> so, I played, what I meant was the dude, Cardinals. I played, ever since I can remember, this is no lie, ever since I can remember, I got three older brothers, so football was part of my life when I can first remember. And we, Rams, nobody was, so I got to see the Chiefs. They were televised here. Oh, right. More, you know. Yeah. yeah, it was all we had for a long time. Right. So I fell in love with them guys as a when I started playing the guitar that young. Yeah. Cool uniforms, right? You know, I'm a yeah. kid. Well, when I got old enough to realize their tradition, the family, and how good of the fan base is and all that, then it was just done. Game anyway, match. so I never, I've never missed a game. Oh, yeah. All right, so like Sundays, even now where I'm at, Outside of Troy, internet sucks now. <laughs> but back then, dial-up was... Oh, my God. <laughs> so, but I would watch the, the little <laughs> football dude. Oh. Like the game went televised. So, like, a noon game, I'd watch it. Well, like the online or like a right. game cast type and thing the fi- and, the, and, I, and, I, and I get the final score like at 5 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Eight hours game after it's done. Two and- but I would watch it, right? Yeah. And, I, and I, that's just part of my... I love I love it. I love it. I love it. So, the season was a great season, right? <laughs> well, my gigs are, I'm getting busy now, and it's awesome. Yeah. So, this, so Rendezvous and Old Fallon was like, we're not sure, but Saturday we might want you to play. Well, Chiefs playoff game was on Saturday, and I'm like, right. cool, whatever, you know, let me know. Yeah. So, she's like, it's going to be the day of, and I'm like, that's fine. So, I get all geared up, I watch them by myself, I don't, I don't have yeah. a... Hey, let's have a Chiefs party. <laughs> right, yeah. It's serious stuff. Your mom's like, don't man. talk to me when this is on. Evidently, it's got to be it's got to be the blues to you. I, yeah, I right. can tell you're a big blues yeah. fan. So I um, get geared up. I'm like, cool, man. And it was like the perfect game. It started out perfect, man. It was like 31 to 6. Well, 31 to nothing in the halftime. Yeah. Anyway. Then turn out 12. So yeah. Check this out. Yeah. Check this out. This is what I'm trying to get to. Yeah. I, right before halftime, they call me and they're like, we're going to go ahead and have you if that's cool. And I'm like, it's money. Awesome. We're up. Beautiful. Yeah. So at halftime, I get ready, and I'm leaving. As soon as I walk, I'm getting ready to walk out the door, and the third quarter started, and we threw an interception. And I'm like, meh. Right. Right? Yeah. I'm going to get on my phone, and I'm going to be able to listen to the game on the way there. So I thought, well, my phone's acting up. I can't get internet. <laughs> There's a wreck. So I'm late. Yeah. So when I get to a foul, and I finally get internet, and we're up by like 10. They're coming back, and I'm like, <laughs> So I'm setting up. I'm supposed to start at seven. I'm yeah. setting up, 
and I got one earbud in in this one, and the place is happy, and they're all la di da da Right, and yeah. it's packed, and they're all wanting to talk to me, and I'm like, ah! You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't talk. Right. So I sit up, and they take the lead, and it's like 6.55, and I gotta start at 7. Well, everything's set up, and I'm sitting on the stool, and the clock goes off, and I'm like, I'm staring, like, how the fuck am I supposed to play? Right. Oh, my heart just got broken. Yeah, dude. right. <laughs> I'd never felt like this before. Yeah. And I'm like, ah. so I started playing. I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> Can't remember lyrics. I don't feel like playing. Yeah. So I play for like 30 minutes, and I'm like, I'm going to take my break. I got to go outside. I got to get fresh air. Yeah. So I go outside, and I'm wearing my chief stuff, and I go outside, and I come back in, and the whole place just stands up and gives me a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we love you, man. I'm like, Dave, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I do that. You got that just empty gut feeling. Worst like, day of my life, man. I, I think it's still sore. I think that was our first exclusive for the podcast. That was uh, Wade admitting that he uh, caused the Chiefs to lose. Yeah, that might, yeah. yeah. nice you, shot, man. So, you would, if you were to stay at home and watch the rest yeah. of that game, freaking passion for music, me. man. I That's what it gets you. That's what it gets you. <laughs> I don't care if it's. Point fest. I'm not taking it. That playoff game. I'm not moving. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Game. With blues, that's that's kind of where I am. Is like if I can. And when I was working in retail, there's so many nights where I'd, uh, I I miss the game, and so like it wasn't as much a big deal. But when it hits the playoffs, you're just like, I gotta see every game. But luckily, I was able to to watch them, which is unfortunately now not so benefit good. benefit of being able to of playing for so long and by ear. I did a. Uh, it was a fundraiser for a. Pets and Claws in oh, yeah. Illinois when we were playing the Blackhawks the last game or the one we got eliminated yeah on. and uh I was listening to the game and when you when you plug your ears you can really hear yourself well yeah right so I was like I'll be able to hear myself over so I'm in the corner playing for all these people and I'm listening to the blues game they don't even have a clue and all my songs I memorized right so I don't even, I don't even know what I sound like, like, like but, I, no <laughs> but they're like that was really good. I'm like, like, I'm like, yeah, but we lost. Yeah, I don't know. That was horrible. You don't know what I heard. Dude. They had no clue I was listening horrible. to the Blues game. That's funny. That's funny. Jeez. Well, I guess like, you want know, you know to jam a song, man? I will. Yeah. Absolutely. Do some do some music here and then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll chat some more uh, about what you got coming up here. So, uh, right. what, what song are you going to play? This is, uh, for the record, before you, he told us that he played, what's the song by Patrick Swayze? She's uh, like the wind. She's like the wind, which is phenomenal. We're not gonna play it, but that just that blew my mind. I was like, that's freaking beautiful. But yeah, so you're, you're gonna play an original one, right? This is real. This is one so, that I wrote a long time ago. Sweet. Th- this one, I- I've been writing with some guys that um, got some stuff coming out, but this one I haven't messed. But this one all came out like quick. It's just a, about an out. ex, you know. Yeah. It's the broken heart thing. Sweet. All right. What's it called? Never say goodbye. Never say goodbye. All right. Here it is. <laughs> you made full of time I washed away like this heart of mine I gave you all that was inside Yeah. 
I've been sick for two and a half weeks. Yeah. Dude, my guitar was out of tune. No, it's not a great for mm. like. I mean, mm. I can easily hear. Have you recorded any of your stuff yet? Or have you, you gone to the studio record? Not any professionally done. No, oh, I'm just curious. That, that sounded like legitimately like a. Like I could hear it on the radio. Like it was anybody. That was awesome. Well, Thank you. Man. But that's why I hear, I mean, I'm not the guitar or the singing, but like the way you but, looked, but like, you look like you could totally play guitar. Yeah. No, no, I was, you look like you, you, know, you can pull off. You look like you could be a musician, man. Like, look at the tattoos. No, and stuff. That sounded awesome, man. That, Thank you. Very well done. Uh, being a big fan of a lot of songwriters, I, I hear it all the time that like all the hits that they 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 come together in like five ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Like it's the ones that just yeah the ones that they work on are the ones that don't end up doing nothing. But all of a sudden, like you get it line or whatever it is and you run with it and then all of a sudden a song comes together and a couple of minutes and it a, becomes a big hit right and uh, it, so you said that one came together pretty quickly like mm-hmm. that that bitch broke my heart <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens way to go uh, so how do you when you when you start writing um, writing original stuff how is there a process you kind of go through is it just like because it seems like whenever you start music you can't force it you can't just be like I'm going to sit down and write a song I mean for me maybe it's different for how, how's your process of it? that's what I'm learning mm-hmm. because there's so much I have a hard time just in general relating what I know identifying mm-hmm. feelings ideas I have a hard time translating that to you just in general anyway. Right. And there's so much stuff in my head that I don't recognize how good that is. It's so jumbled. So mm-hmm. that's why I've I've reached out to some people for some help because it's like, man, I all I hear is people don't have ideas and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've I've lived so much of you yeah. know, when I was out in my fucking abusing days and yeah. You know, and just the world of recovery and the people who I've come in contact with. Anyway, that's why um, I was doing a thing for at Shamrocks. Mm-hmm. Um, can't remember if it was the Talk SDL thing or if it was Scotty's birthday, somebody's birthday. 
but they asked me to play their party and there was going to be a lot of their buddies there and Cavo was there and they were going to yeah. play some stuff and and Casey uh, the singer for them was supposed to we're supposed to get together and start writing which his writing's awesome mm-hmm. you know he's a great songwriter and I, I'm just like dude I, I want to throw all this crap at you and mm-hmm. I want to teach me how to is it a process is it a sit right. down and or are we going to just kind of go, go as get our a... favorite food and then hopefully something fall you know I yeah. don't know you know yeah because if I try part of it part of it's I think there's all kinds of crap involved mm-hmm. there's procrastination and laziness and right I mean if I really sat down and tried to do something but then I get so complicated and that's why that's how my brain works it's complicated yeah. the more simple you get that this song, man, I haven't even tinkered with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I haven't. I don't even know if the chord structure's right or not, <laughs> or if there is a right or not. Yeah, but it sounded great, dude. It's the chick. Yeah, and it's so simple that, dude, I really loved you, man. And, yeah. Um, it all just came together. Right, and you're gone, dude. Yeah. And I and I love you, and I, but I gotta say goodbye. Yeah, yeah. So, Do you, are you like a your own kind of like worst critic? Like when you're oh, writing a song, absolutely. because that seems to like what's really hard is like you write something, you're like. Oh, well, sounds good. And if you start to kind of get hit like a, you know, a, uh, a gap or something, or just like, oh, what should I do next? And you're just like, uh, this doesn't sound so good, you know. Right. And just like where you, then you just kill like the whole thing. Are you kind of? Like, oh, oh, it's or, a, horrible. <laughs> I mean, like that with my voice. Yeah. You know, Shane posted that video of doing that for data. I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. <laughs> it makes me sick every time I hear it. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. So, my self esteem is shot anyway. So when I play and. And then I get approached by these people, touching people really like in a significant yeah. way of going, I never heard stuff like that. Or, yeah. And I'm like, really? <laughs> you know, you're just, just being good. Because you're yeah. not hearing the same thing I'm hearing. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's probably I all. Be, I wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't for people. Yeah. I, yeah. I hear that a lot too. That they are, uh, every time I'm like, I had a great time like watching people f- f- perform and they, they're always like, yeah, well, that was a terrible show. And it's like, yeah, I loved it. I thought it was great. You right. know, it's like, but as a fan, like, I'm not, and I, I don't have the ear to to hear all your mistakes and things. I, don't, I can't pick all that stuff out. To me, it all sounded great, and uh, I had a good time. And, yeah, and that's what, <laughs> that's where the open-mindedness comes in at, or as far as going, I'm sitting here playing. That's what I try to remember, going, how I hear it isn't how people hear it, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not... Could you, even if you mess up... Or, say, I say, you probably could have gone through that song you just played and like, I messed up here, here, and then we're like, that sounded absolutely great, and you're just like, and it, well, and I messed it, up the brute, or whatever, you know? And it, and now, it's 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 a curse and a blessing of the same. It drives me yeah. to be as good as I can, and when I practice, it drives me to practice and all that, but, yeah. but then again, it takes away from enjoying the show when... It didn't have to be as serious as I put it on right. to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, you're just... <laughs> yeah, right. It's music, man. Just let it go. Yeah. But if it's something you're so passionate about, right. it's something you really... I mean, it's not like you're just... Uh, and maybe you're not as critical maybe doing like a, a cover, but when it's something you kind of put your heart and soul into and you're like, you know, you want it to be absolutely perfect, especially when there's so much emotion right. behind it, you know, compared right. to like, you know, just playing the cover and being like, oh, if I mess up, you know, I got the just of it. You know, if I was playing something original, I'd want to... Probably even more, a hundred times more critical of it because right. it's there's so much that I put into it. But right, and it's just and it shows. I mean, I mean, when like when you know of recent man that there's a whole bunch going on mm-hmm. of you know I'm booked for a couple months out and and it just shows the that drive whatever the practice is paying off. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about what what you got coming up here. Um, Shane had mentioned before the block was it was the block party. Yeah, Ink, Ink Spot Block Party in Troy. They, um, Wade's done it like four years in a row now. This is a, uh, give somebody else a chance, man. Jeez, yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Stop taking all the all the block parties, bro. Gosh. Gosh. Um, last year was like huge. Like for mm-hmm. for one dollar, they had um, what uh, Cabo Hurt, uh, Shaman's Harvest. Uh, Hollow Point Heroes, Fivefold, um, lineups are retarded. <laughs> Brook Royal, like I mean, yeah, the lineup was stacked for a buck, and it was yeah. like, and just, and it was, they focus on Midwest and. There's another jelly bean. <laughs> Man, I can't help it. Where's the dog now? <laughs> uh, they focus on Midwest talent, local guys here, yeah. all through you know St. Louis area, and and uh, 
and Big Dave uh, out in Troy, he's putting it all on. It's all his, uh, him and Robbie uh, kind of came up with this idea, and they put it all together. And it was supposed to be like just for appreciation for the fans. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. supposed to, and then it blew up right big wow. time. Yeah, start. Yeah, it started in the parking lot as like a barbecue and a show, and mm-hmm. then like it went and now it's. Now they're taking over the uh, Troy Fairgrounds and, oh, wow. and last that's time. Biggest point fest. Yeah. Oh wow, that's yeah, awesome. That was, uh, I so Wade's always uh, he's been a part of it four years and he's uh, going to be a part of this next one August second. August second. So uh, keep an and eye now out. I'm, I'm not sure what I know. I know that they have uh, their band, their lineups book. I know they got two stages, and I don't know. What they're gonna do with me if they're gonna, if I'm doing the whole day, mm-hmm. like at the beer garden for people, or if it's gonna be here and there for like a, like last year I did before the three headliners did the national anthem. Oh, yeah. He'll come out. I don't know what he, he'll let me know the day. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> 10 minutes before he got here, okay, so I'm gonna need you to uh, cover this. And mm-hmm. so, all right. That's awesome. It's a good time, man. August 2nd, you said? Yeah. That's August awesome. Um, you got any other, other, other gigs coming up? Said you're getting pretty booked, it seems like. I am, and these jelly beans are awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those are $10 a piece, so we're really making some good. This is the uh, the podcast money fund, so every jelly bean you eat, that's $10. So uh, <laughs> thanks for providing our hosting. Um, <laughs> as, of, as, of, as, of, as of now, the, the regular one, I'm at Everything Cigar and Wine Barrel Bar. Mm-hmm. Every Wednesday night, 7 to 10. Um, I'm going to be there a lot, uh, I think. That's like uh, you said around Brian and in. Brian, Brian and in. That's where it was at, yeah. Okay. Brian and in. If you go, um, you know, the theater is there on in. Yeah. The two theaters. If you go right, they're doing that construction where they move in. Yeah. It's so funny. I, <laughs> I, I know that because yeah. I freaking work there, right. right there at that Penny's for yeah, it makes me laugh. But, oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> when Brian and in are right there, if you continue down in, mm-hmm. that's a quarter of a mile, not too far, it's on the left. Gotcha. Um, there you know, Wednesday. You know where the potholes at? And like, <laughs> right. uh, you know where that one place is at? It's right next to it. Is, is there uh, a Walgreens uh, nearby or a quick trip? Yeah, so I know where it's at. I'm there Wednesday. That'd be the ninth. Mm-hmm. Uh, rendezvous the next Thursday. Rendezvous in O'Fallon. That's across from McGurk's. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm back at the Barrel Bar the 11th that Friday. And then Saturday night I'm at... Um, Whiskey sticks off Brian Road in O'Fallon. Oh, gotcha. That rendezvous is a nice spot. Yeah. Rendezvous is cool. Yeah. I haven't been to a music, but I've been comedy there, and uh, they do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I do. It's neat to see that they how much they are involved in the community and doing mm-hmm. uh, stuff. So, yeah, it's a neat spot. I know that the Barrel Bar. I seen something on Facebook, man. They uh, they had like a painting show there. And, huh. Yeah. Like an art festival. But like you go in the back and they got rooms there. You can go back and shut the door and smoke them cigars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just got all sorts of stuff. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, I got to check, and I'm just curious. It may, like... You want some Garth, don't you? Can you just play some goddamn Garth Brooks for me? <laughs> that's just... That's all I need. Uh, no, I was, was going to ask you just... And I don't know if you're, uh, like, in into, like, guitar styles. But, like, is there a certain guitar that you've always just, like... Man, if I could have all unlimited amount of money, like that's just something that always crossed my mind. Like being a cherry burst, <laughs> Gibson hummingbird. Is it? Is that legitimate? I don't even know. Is that what it is? Yep. Yeah. Not a. Is that like in Wayne's world? Whenever he's like oh, obsessive, absolutely. and it's like absolutely. no stairway to heaven. One day yeah. she'll be mine. She'll oh be yes. Mine. Oh yes. And I Love see all that. these guys just taking them and taking it for granted. It's like, dude. I always like the PRS, those PRS electric guitars, and I was like, oh my god, I wish mm-hmm. I. And then they're like, it's like two grand. Never got one. But I figured you'd say the Esteban, that guitar that we were talking about on the QVC or whatever. You know, it's like ninety nine dollars, right? Because it comes right. with a case, man. It's, it's a, a hard it's case. The, the PV Predator is the one I want. You can get it at the Wayne's and Troy for thirty bucks. No, listen to this guitar. This is what you can. It's like dung, dung, dung. This doesn't sound like Esteban at all. Jeez. Uh, I uh, I used to have a Gibson Les Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was watching uh, Joe Dirt and the Dirty Boys a while back, and mm-hmm. and Jerry Jost has got his lineup of guitars, and like he's got the uh, that Eddie Van Halen uh, shattered like 
51, 51. Yeah, yeah that yeah. red guitar, like that. Yeah. And like, I mean, that's like such an iconic guitar too. Like, right. so many people probably anybody who grew up through the eighties, loving Van Halen, probably like, man, I want that guitar, and like, right. I, I want to play like Eddie. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure like the, I'm sure you probably got one of those too. Huh? I do. I, uh, well, actually, electrics. No, I mean. So you more acoustic? I mean, you said you played, you know, different stuff. You said you just got it back to electric, but I was just curious, you know, because it seems like, I mean, especially playing guitar as long as you have, I just didn't know if there was, like, that guitar that you're like, one day, I just, I would want that guitar. No, because there's, there's so there's so many different electric guitars are different to me as, as far as, like, technology's so good that yeah you can buy pedals and stuff and make a shitty guitar sound really good right you know what yeah I mean? so it's like I, I i mean there's a i did i did get a mars a music store was going out of business a long time ago oh, yeah. they were going out and they were doing a clearance and i bought a kirk hammett ltd oh metallica <laughs> yeah for like 200 bucks wow now it wasn't his signature series it yeah. was less but that thing played fantastic yeah <laughs> and then i played gibson's where they didn't play as good and it's like you just never know. I think a lot of times it's like the talent of the guitarist. I mean, because like, I could have this crappy guitar and it's going to sound crappy if I play it. Like, if you picked it up, you could probably make it sound amazing. I'm just like, why can't I make it do that? You know? Yeah, like, right. So I'm sure a lot of it's a talent, and, you know, it's just technique and how you're playing it, you know? And, right. Uh, like you said, electric is a little different monster because you got all these different that, pedals that's, and effects that's and my, stuff. Uh, I can do that in my sleep, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's just, not yet. Tried, I wish I could. And even if I tried, I'd. Have a dream of that. It still sounded like crap. I just suck at guitar all the time. It's stupid. You know, guitar hero. Yeah, guitar, right. right. I bet I could beat you at medium with guitar hero. <laughs> my, uh, my brother's friend. 98% Zach, bitch. Could play, uh, I don't remember what song it was. I don't know if it was more than feeling, but play it like on the hardest level, not looking at it. He would just turn around and play that on guitar hero. Because he had it memorized. And was right. Like, That's crazy. Man. God, I love that. What about that? Uh, what about that Dragon Force or Dra- Oh yeah, the yeah the uh, yeah, into like the I can't remember what song. Yeah. It's like into the fire or something. Yeah, that song is just insane. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it sounds like yeah. It doesn't even. I wonder if there's like a chicken balking. Yeah, I wonder if they're. <laughs> <laughs> it's a turkey. <laughs> or, or turkey. <laughs> oh man, I wonder if they can if that really sounds like good live. Because I heard they speed that up, but I don't know. I've never been a major drag or Dragon Force yeah, fan. I think, I think it's the name of the name. I don't know. It's Dragon Force, but can't I can't be fun. Yeah, yeah Play I know, that. like, I would be stressed out. You ain't jumping around and you get headbanging to that. You gotta be like, <laughs> yeah, okay, just imagine and... if you miss like three or four notes and then you're behind and you're just like, no, I can't play anymore. I can't catch up. <laughs> Lightning Man. Yeah. Fast. Where am I at? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Jeez, that'd be crazy. All right, let's hear your cover of Dragon Force now. All right. The acoustic cover. I just plays his E strings. No, <laughs> there it is. You're set, man. Sweet. Uh, well, is there anything? I think we're about set here, dude. I appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah. Give any time. Good to good to talk. And uh, like I said, that song was awesome. Like I could have. You, you could have just played the radio, and I'd be like. Oh. Phenomenal, so well yeah. done. So, I mean, yeah. I could have played it better, but I, mean, you know, I didn't want to show anybody wait, up. Wait, you know, <gasps> yeah, get up my mandolin. You <laughs> like uh, good 80s, 90s rock, country, everything? Uh, check out Wade, he's coming to your neighborhood. That's right, come for your kids. Yeah, uh, not really. I mean, well, he's a good, good guy, or your kids' mothers, your kids' mothers, <laughs> if yes. they're available, if they're if right. they're available and they're respectable women. <laughs> um, not threatening at all though he's a really cool guy if so they, uh, yeah. if they like it to do with the cha-cha <laughs> <laughs> right. so go ahead and say the couple places you're going to be at uh, real quick just to right, Wednesday night going to be at the Barrel Bar everything's wine and cigars Barrel Bar Brian and N 7 to 10 nice Good. rhyming there like that. <laughs> right. put that on post uh, see. sorry <laughs> 10th Thursday Rendezvous 7 to 10 in O'Fallon Friday I'm back at the Barrel Bar I think that's from 7 to 11. It's longer on Friday. And Saturday the 12th, I'm at uh, Whiskey Sticks from 8 to 11. Nice. That's off Brian Road. And uh, he's got a Facebook fan page. You can give him a like. Check that out. He has a Twitter page. Isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, play, just keep playing that. It's going to play the Fun podcast out. So. Yeah, play it out because we're going we're gonna to finish <laughs> off that. That's phenomenal. <laughs> Denver Wade Trent, music and personal, whatever. You can like yeah. me on Facebook. I always post 
on Sunday nights where I'm playing that week. Yeah. On my music page because it always sticks up there. I won't just get lost in the feed. Oh, right. Um, and that's where I put my videos and stuff. Yeah. The, you can get the link to my YouTube stuff. Yeah, it's all on there. So you freaking rock, dude. Appreciate you coming on. Awesome. Enjoy it. Thank you. Guys. Uh, and and again, Wade Trent, man. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 <laughs>